Hello everybody. Uh, last week we talked about the federal and state judicial branch uh, and with an emphasis on the Supreme Court. Today we are going to talk about two different types of Supreme Court cases. Um, there are five cases total. You have national supremacy cases which say essentially that the federal government has all power. If you remember, um, that is the idea of federalism, that the federal law is the highest law. You have First Amendment cases that obviously deal with your rights to religion, assembly, press, petition, or speech. You have student rights cases, which would apply to y'all's life a little more than mine, um, but we will talk about those last. You have civil rights cases, which deal with the rights of African Americans, the rights of women, the rights of minorities, the rights of people with disabilities. Um, so we're going to talk about a couple cases from civil rights. And you also have the rights of the accused, which are the rights you have when you are arrested or put in jail. So we're going to go ahead and get started with national supremacy. Um, First question says, what document says the federal government is supreme? And if you can recall back to the Constitution, it would be Article 6 of the United States Constitution. Remember, let's eat Jolly Ranchers and sip root beer. <clears throat> Article 6 is the Supremacy Clause. So the first court case ever was Marbury versus Madison. It happened in 1803. Marbury was appointed as a U.S. judge by President John Adams during his last days in office, and President Jefferson refused to give Marbury his position. So the way this worked is, uh, if you all recall, when you were appointed as a Supreme Court justice, you have to be approved by the Senate. Well, uh, John Adams tried to have those approvals um, fast-tracked, and he left a bunch of appointments on his desk so when Je uh, thomas jefferson came into office i guess he adams thought jefferson would just like pass him on but jefferson said no well marbury had already been told by adams that he was going to be a, uh, appointed as a supreme court judge and the person who is in charge of those is james madison who was the vice president at the time because if you remember the vice president is the leader of the senate so he would be responsible for taking the appointments to the senate so marbury sued madison and the decision is that Marbury does not get his appointment because he was never approved by the Senate. Um, but the big thing this established was judicial review, which just gives the Supreme Court the power to review a court case. Then you got Korematsu versus the United States. This happened in 1942. Um, background. During World War II, Executive Order 9066 was placed on Japanese Americans, and it put them all in internment camps. Um, there was a guy named Fred Korematsu, and he said that um, he should not be subject to going into the internment camp because he was a Japanese American, so he was an American citizen. He said his citizenship was being infringed on. But the Supreme Court said that the order is constitutional because it was related to national security, and I should add this, during a time of war. So during a time of war, martial law is invoked and our typical rights are limited. And there's a picture of the internment camp. McCulloch versus Maryland in 1819. Uh, McCulloch was a bank cashier who refused to pay a tax placed on the federal bank by the state of Maryland. Um, and so essentially what happened was the state of Mar the federal bank was brand new. The state of Maryland tried to tax the federal bank um, but it went to the Supreme Court and it allowed, the decision is that Congress is allowed to create a bank and the states cannot tax the national government because of the Supremacy Clause. All right, you got Gibbons versus Ogden. You had Gibbons who had federal permission to run a steamboat in the state of New York to ferry people across uh, the Hudson River. And then you had Ogden, who had a state charter to run a ferry for the exact same thing. Ogden um, thought that he had more power given sued him because he said he had federal permission. They go to court, and the decision is that the federal government is supreme, and Congress has the power to regulate commerce. So Ogden's charter is not valid. Gibbons was the only person that had the right 
uh, to ferry a charter. And that relates to the Commerce Clause. Then you got U.S. versus Nixon, 1974. So President Nixon got caught in the Watergate scandal. I don't know if any of you have ever heard of it, but in the Watergate scandal, President Nixon hired some people to break into the Democratic National Convention, which was happened to be at the Watergate Hotel. Um, and so when they broke into the convention, somebody found out about it, and they, they told on him, essentially. And so there were questions of, should Richard Nixon have to give up the tapes that were going to make him look guilty, just like the rest of us would have to, um, if we were, uh, if we had committed a crime and there was evidence, then uh, they could the the government could get a search warrant and search our houses to take that evidence. Well, the president is no different, and so uh, it was ruled in the Supreme Court that the president cannot abuse his power of executive privilege to cover or alter crime in an investigation, and Nixon was forced to give up the tapes under the precedent of the rule of law, which eventually would lead to Richard Nixon's resignation um, later on. All right, let's talk about civil rights cases. So it says, SCOTUS cases that decided if individual liberties and rights were violated, what are civil rights? Civil rights are just your basic rights, guys. Um, your right to you know, be in a, in the same place as other people. That is a civil right. Like if you're black and I'm white, then we can still stay in the same school because of our civil rights. All right. Plessy versus Ferguson is probably the oldest and most famous civil rights case in 1896. Uh, you got Homer Plessy, who was an eighth black. He bought a white train ticket and refused to move on, uh, went, refused to move to the black train when arrested. Now this was kind of set up, uh, it was in Louisiana. Homer Plessy, um, he looks just like me. And if you like, this is him right here. And that, like that, that guy looks like a white guy with a beard, just like me. Um, and so you probably wouldn't be able to tell that he is even a little bit black. Anyway, uh, this was all a ploy. So he told the person taking tickets that he was black. And so they made him move and it, you know, this was try, kind of to try to draw attention to how African Americans were treated at the time. So, um, he wouldn't move. They, they sue the trains, they go to the Supreme court and the decision is that segregation laws are constitutional, constitutional as long as the, the separate but equal doctrine is, uh, in place. And that goes along with the 14th amendment of equality. So you see separate, but equal, but the problem we all know is that separate is not equal because this white water fountain right here and this black water water fountain right there are not the same. And so when we, you, I don't know if you remember last week, we talked about precedent later on, the precedent will change. Then you got Dred Scott versus Sanford. Uh, this is 1854. Dred Scott was a slave whose owner moved from a slave state to a free state. He sued for his frame freedom, claiming that he was now living in a free state and therefore he should be free. And the decision was that Dred Scott was a slave, meaning he was property. And so that he did not have the right to be in the court because he was not a citizen. Um, so Dred Scott's case was tossed out because of citizenship laws, because he was not a citizen, because he was technically a slave. And if you recall, when we've talked about it in the past, slaves were treated as property, not as people. There is a picture of Dred Scott. All right. Brown versus Board of Education is 1954. This is directly tied to Plessy versus Ferguson. So if you remember, Plessy versus Ferguson sets up separate but equal. Brown versus Board is going to change that decision. Uh, Mr. Brown demanded his daughter be allowed into a white school in order to receive a better education. So essentially, Mr. Brown's daughter was having to walk past a white school in Topeka, Kansas, to go to a black school because remember segregation uh, was still in effect and the black school did not have adequate funding. They did not have adequate uh, textbooks or desks or materials they needed. And so his daughter was walking past this white school every single day and uh, he said that's not fair. And so he sued the Board of Education in Topeka, Kansas and he won. 
And the Supreme Court said that segregation is unconstitutional. They said that separate is not equal. And so they integrated schools. So here are pictures of uh, little black girls and little white girls all at the same classroom. All right, Swan versus Charlotte Mecklenburg of 1971. Uh, Mr. Swan's child was being bused across town for school in order to integrate the schools and keep a racial balance. This kind of goes with um, Plessy versus Ferguson and Brown versus Board of Education because in order to implement the integration, they were putting white kids on buses and taking them across town to the black schools and putting black kids on other buses and busing them across town to the white schools so that there was an even balance of black kids and white kids in schools. And the decision from the Supreme Court is that busing is constitutional if it is used to achieve racial integration. Uh, and that deals with the 14th Amendment for equality and de facto segregation uh, is segregation by choice or tradition. So you have de jure segregation, which is segregation by law, and de facto segregation, which is segregation by choice. Uh, the University of California versus Bach or Bakke uh, in 1978. Alan Bakke was a white male who was denied entrance into medical school so that uh, the school could reach its black quota, even though he was more qualified. So Bakke was upset because um, he had a higher GPA than some of the African-American candidates who were uh, applying for the job or applying to get into medical school. Um, and he was upset because he had been denied twice. And so he sued and they went all the way to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court said that affirmative action is legal, but quotas to determine affirmative action are not constitutional. So it is okay to let minorities in based on the fact that they are a minority. However, you are not allowed to say, well, 15 out of every 100 will be uh, admitted. You can say we will admit minorities, but not a specific number of minorities. And that goes along with the 14th Amendment as well. And then you got Roe versus Wade. Uh, background, Jane Roe wanted to have an abortion. Uh, it was illegal in the state she lived in, which was Texas. Uh, and so the she sued and went all the way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said abortion is legal under the Privacy Clause of the Ninth Amendment and the Equality Clause of the Fourteenth Amendment. So women have the right to do with their bodies what they will because uh, they have the right to privacy under the Ninth Amendment and also they're equal citizens under the Fourteenth Amendment. So abortion became legal. Um, in I want to say 1973. Uh, however, the woman's name was not actually Jane Roe. That's just a misnomer. Her real name is Norma McCorvey. And after she uh, fought so hard to have abortion legalized, she then became an abortion uh, protester and is now one of the biggest opponents, not proponent, but opponents of abortion. And she wants to have abortion abolished in the United States, even though she was the main person in the Roe versus Wade case. And the last one I think we got today, guys, is Heart of Atlanta versus U.S. That is where African Americans were not allowed to stay at a uh, Heart of Atlanta motel. But under the Civil Rights Act in 1964, African Americans could not be denied public access or access to public businesses because the uh, Supreme Court said that the United States government builds the roads, which takes people to the hotels. Therefore, you can't deny access. There's a picture of the Heart of Atlanta Motel. And that is all we will do today. Um, I hope you guys have a great day, and I hope to see you soon.